I recently built a Rostock Max V2 Delta style 3D printer. The kit is very high quality, the build went fine, and I really like the printer. However, there were things I wanted to change about the printer and things I wanted to add to it. The first thing I did was to enhance the heated bed performance as it heated rather slowly and I'll be printing mostly ABS. So I replaced the original 12 volt power supply with a 24 volt power supply and added a 24 volt to 12 volt converter. The converter power is the printer's electronics, which in turn sends control signals to a solid state relay, which then sends 24 volts to the Onyx heated bed. I added a heat sink to the voltage converter and put all the parts into the printer's base. The Onyx heated bed now comes up to operating temperature much, much faster. Now let's take a look at the changes that are a little more visible. Here you can see the way I've configured the enclosure, ceramic heaters, the temperature controller, and several other tweaks. The filament is on a turntable and is fed through an out of filament alarm and then into the extruder. I moved the extruder to the outside of the enclosure to keep it cool and used O-rings and rubber padding on the mounting hardware. So now the extruder runs very, very quietly, whereas it was very noisy in the stock configuration. The enclosure has two overlapping Lexan doors with a cutout on one of the doors, making it easier to place a webcam. Yes, yes, I will replace those long hinge screws with shorter ones soon. I've set up several threaded mounting points where I've placed articulated magic arms to hold cameras and lighting. The webcam is mounted to a quick release plate that gets snapped into a receiver that's attached to the arm. I use a similar setup to tie the top of the printer to the wall, adding rigidity to the entire printer. And this also makes it easy to release the printer when I need to move it. The enclosure has six 3D printed mounting plates. There are two aluminum bars that support the Lexan doors and four slip-on plastic hinges that connect the five Lexan polycarbonate panels. I've placed closed cell foam insulation between the panels and the printer surfaces. A Raspberry Pi 2 is configured with Octoprint to provide wireless printing and monitoring capabilities as well as controlling a webcam for time-lapse movies of the prints. The extra USB connector is used when controlling the printer via a computer. To facilitate better cooling of the electronics, I added an intake vent with a mesh filter. Here you can see how I have mounted the LED lighting units so I can control the lighting ratios of the webcam captures. I added three LED lighting pucks to the top of the printer. They have a remote that controls the intensity and color of the light. Generally, I leave it set to white light, but sometimes it's fun to change the colors or have it change its own colors, either quickly or as sort of a high-tech lava lamp. This unit controls the temperature of the heated enclosure. The two ceramic heaters are individually switched, which allows me to turn off one or both of the heaters without having to turn off or reset the controller. So when I'm not printing, the controller simply displays the room temperature. The third switch controls an air pump that will be used for PLA layer cooling in lieu of a layer fan. The hot end shown here is an E3D V6. It's mounted below the effector plate. Nothing is hardwired, everything has plug-in connectors. I have two other effector plates. This one has the stock hot end and three layer fans. I like to mount the hot ends below the effector plates, partially to make it easier to see the printed object in the video recordings. The third plate has a digital indicator that comes in handy when calibrating the end stop screws. The ball and socket configuration of the delta arms makes it very easy to switch effector plates. I will be installing this bird air cooling kit. The circular section of pipe is mounted around the hot end nozzle and air is pushed through tubing by an air pump housed in the printer's top section. 
One length of clear tubing is already within the wiring sheet, and it will connect to a shorter, thinner length of yellow tubing that goes to the metal pipe. I've just started using a build plate from Gecko Tech 3D. The configuration I ordered has an aluminum heat spreader platform with magnets, and that attaches to the heated bed. The coated build plate is easily removed from the platform, and once the plate has cooled, a slight flexing of the build plate releases the print. Then the build plate can be returned, ready for another print. The printer sits atop a tool cabinet. This gives me a place to keep tools and supplies, and I've set aside an area to temporarily deposit waste items like filament clippings and rafts. I've configured both of my printers to bring the platform to a height of 46 inches, making it easy for me to watch printing without having to bend over. It's a nice ergonomic touch. There are many ways to control or monitor printing. I've been switching between using various tools, and I rather like using matter control to do the slicing, layer previewing, and monitoring. It's got a great feature set, and it even sends emails and SMS messages to me when my prints are done. I also like using Octopi, running on the Raspberry Pi version 2, either to do the actual printing and time-lapse photography, or at least to let me monitor the webcam at any time to see how my prints are progressing. So this is the current configuration, and the printer is only about six weeks old. I'm looking forward to continuing the enhancements, I'd like to vent the air from the enclosure to the outside, perhaps install some aluminum hot end mounts, and of course one day we might have an automatic calibration mechanism. In the meantime, I'm rather pleased with the current configuration, and I hope this gives you some ideas for your own printers. Many thanks go to the folks on the CME CNC forum who provided guidance with many of these upgrades, and thanks for watching.